If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, October 10th, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. On yesterday's show, we talked to Ellen Baumgartner, one of the members of the United States Short Course World Championship team. And today in the Finis Monitor, we'll talk to another, another member of that team, Steve Schmuel, a sophomore at Indiana University. And Steve joins us right now from Bloomington. Steve, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm great, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Good to have you on. Congratulations on making the short course world team. Must be a great feeling right now. Thank you, it is. So uh, I asked this of Ellen Baumgartner yesterday. Were you surprised that you were named to the team or were you, was this expected? I was, I was a little surprised. I really didn't even know that I was in contention to make it. And so when I found out that I made it, I was just overwhelmed and it was a really good feeling. So I know a lot of people at the U.S. Open, they were looking for, you know, it was kind of like a second chance meet. Um, did you kind of view that as, an, as a kind of a redemption meet for you after trials? Um, not really. I just, I kind of used uh, U.S. Open to build on my performances that I had had at uh, trials. And uh, that ended up working out. I swam faster in almost everything at U.S. Open than I did at uh, trials. Well, you say you swam faster, you were open. Why do you think um, you were able to do that? Were you just a little nervous from trials, or was your preparation just a little bit different? Uh, preparation was definitely different. We didn't for all the way down for Olympic trials, and uh, because U.S. Open was our focus of the summer, so at U.S. Open I was fully tapered and able to swim a lot faster. Well, it's kind of curious to me. I've heard this from a lot of coaches and swimmers who didn't taper fully for the Olympic trials was was the thinking just because, okay, this time at least, I'm not going to make the Olympic team, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put a lot of focus on it, knowing that U.S. Open, you were going to have a better shot of making finals and, and getting some podium finishes? Um, I guess that's part of it. Um, I don't know. I kind of just went along with what the coaches told me to do. Um, but I think tapering for U.S. Open... It's later in the summer. We have had the time to put in more training, so I think that was just the more logical one to taper all the way out for. Well, you're not the first swimmer to say you just do what your coaches do. <laughs> so you know you're <laughs> you're you're not in, in rare company there. So as I said, you you got on the team based on your base based on your uh, third place finish at the four and I am at U.S. Open. So mm -hmm. uh, now you swim multiple events. But so why was your 400 IM your best event this summer as opposed to say the 200 fly or 200 free? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I started I started training the 400 IM after like NCs last year. So in in March I kind of started switching over, doing our 400 IM group that we have here, and that's a great great group, good training partners, and um. I just really excelled in it. I really hadn't, didn't do the 400 in high school. I swam it at a local meet we had here in Bloomington. I made trials. Then I swam it at trials, dropped like five seconds, placed really high. And then US Open came around. I dropped like another five or six seconds. And now I'm on the world championships team. Well, the fact that you didn't fully rest for trials and then got 11th place at, at Olympic trials and at 400 AMs probably makes you feel pretty good about the the direction that your 400 IM is going. Yeah, I was really excited about that. I, I didn't even expect to even ever swim the 400 IM at Olympic trials. I thought going into college that I was done with it, that I'd never swim it again. But that just, I don't know, that's not in the plan anymore. So, Well, as I said, you're on the world championship team in this 400 IM. You'll be going there with Ryan Lochte, the reigning Olympic champion. He said he's not doing the 400 IM anymore. Are you going to be kind of looking to him to give you any tips on um, how, to, how to swim this race well at World Championships? Uh, yeah, I think I might. It is my, one of my first international meets. 
uh, definitely the highest quality meat that I've ever been to. So it'd be great to have some advice some, from someone who's had a lot of experience in that event. Well, let's go back to um, college swimming here. Indiana has been stuck at 10th place at the NCAAs for a couple of years. What is it going to take this year, this season, for you guys to break into that single-digit placing? Um, I know in years past we've struggled at NCs, coming back in finals and swimming faster than we did in prelims. So uh, we're making big strides, big efforts to do a lot better this year. We have some pretty lofty goals, and so everyone's training hard. I think that we're going to be a lot higher than 10th this year. And it probably helps that you got Eric Ress coming back for you. Yeah, he adds a lot, a lot to the team. He's a great leader and just a great addition to the team. So when you talk about the fact that Indiana has struggled swimming faster in finals, which I, if I remember correctly, you swam faster in your prelim 200 fly at NCAAs than you did in the finals. Is this, is this just kind of mental training that you guys are working on, or is it just um, something else? Uh, for me, it's mental. Um, I'm not really sure about everyone else, though. So. Well, I, I think that's uh, definitely a lot of, uh, that's a big part of training I think a lot of colleges uh, miss out on. Um, mm -hmm. So as I said, you got, you made the console final, consolation final at the NCAA's 200 fly, finished 14th as a freshman, which is still very good, very big accomplishment. Uh, what do you think it's going to take for you to get into that top eight this um, next year? Um, I, I just training, training hard, doing what I've been doing, that I should be able to make it into the uh, top eight this year. I'm, I'm confident that I can do that. Well, one more thing before we go. Um, you got a twin brother, Tim, at Colorado State, and he's um, on the track team there. Did the two of you ever compete in the same sport? Were you ever a runner? Or was he ever a swimmer? We did. We we did almost every sport together. Um. He's a, I'm just not really a land person. Uh, <laughs> and he's not a water person. Uh, we, when we both swam, when we were like eight and nine, we were dead even. Um, but then we just kind of, once we got into high school, we took our separate ways. He ran track and I started swimming. Does that kind of help the, the relationship between the two of you, knowing you're not in the same sport now? Yeah, I think it does. We're... We're competitive enough that I don't think it would be healthy to be in the same sport. Well, it's definitely you definitely made a right choice to stick with swimming. It's really showing, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing how you do this next season in college at, at Indiana. Steve, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you down the road. All right, thanks for having me. All right, so that's Steve Schmuel joining us from Indiana University. And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. As always, we invite you to visit us at swimmingworld.com on Facebook, or on Twitter to keep in touch with the latest news. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.